Hi, I'm Matt Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We've all suffered a lot during this year in some way or another. We've lost loved ones, lost interaction with our loved ones, lost time at work, we've lost jobs, all kinds of things have happened. We've suffered the loss of church in many cases. I've noticed the last couple of Sundays there's been a surge of people coming back to church and we've had really great attendance. I've talked to some elderly folks who are back. They've gotten their shots, you know, people who've had uh, other conditions to be worried about. They've gotten their shots and they're back in church and it's such a pleasure and joy to see them and talk to them. And how they tell me that it is a great pleasure to be back with their friends and also especially receiving the Lord's gifts in person. Yes, watching church and listening to church on radio and online has been great, they say, but there's nothing like being there in person to be with God's people receiving His gifts. Thanks be to God. It's been a challenging year and many texts that talk about suffering become more relevant to us in these times. I think of 1 Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What a great text, especially this week, Laetare. Rejoice! It's the Rejoice Sunday in the midst of the long weeks of penitential Lent. Suffering is really a significant theme in the Bible, and a lot of times we don't like to consider that. We'd rather not have suffering in difficult times and challenges. I've got a great old book here titled Luther's Theology of the Cross by Walter von Leuwenick, a German theologian. And he explains Luther's view on the cross and the Christian life. The Christian life is a discipleship of suffering, according to Luther. It demonstrates its lowliness in that it leads into suffering. Christ's suffering is still repeated daily in our lives. Therefore, our sufferings are a work of the Holy Spirit. God does not want self-chosen sufferings. When our will is not done, then God's will can be done. But our suffering is God's will. God does his alien work when he leads us into suffering. But thereby he aims at his proper work, even when we do not recognize it. And of course, that proper work is bringing us to eternal life. Through suffering, we shall arrive at the Sabbath of the soul. Hence, according to Luther, suffering is to be regarded as a sanctuary which hallows man, that is, sets him apart from his natural works for service to God. And sufferings are a sign of God's grace, proof that we are God's children. So it has been in this last year. And the challenges in this life will become ever more intense. In the words of the Apostle Peter, there is another testing by fire coming upon us. The Equality Act is coming before the U.S. Senate. It was passed in the U.S. House and uh, very soon will be considered by the Senate. What the Equality Act does is grant protected status for those in the LGBTQ community under the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And that sounds very harmless. However, it has some very deep ramifications for Orthodox Christians. The act is directed very intensely against religious schools, K through 12, and universities. 
they are a prime target and the Equality Act will make it very difficult for those schools to remain open and have Christian standards for students, faculty, and staff regarding sex and sexuality. The Act will forbid students from using their public federal grant monies at institutions, universities, which still uphold marriage between a man and a woman, which will, in effect, close Christian schools across the nation. There are no conscience protections for doctors and nurses who do not wish to perform abortions, and it also threatens the loss of funding to Christian hospitals for not performing health services, very broadly defined, which include abortion and genital mutilation. There's a lot to it, and a lot more to it. It's more than just living at peace with those uh, who are in the LGBTQ community. It's very much about losing our fundamental rights, First Amendment rights as Orthodox Christians. We have the right to the free exercise of religion that means to be who we are. All people deserve the protections of the First Amendment, all people, no matter who they are, and we support that. So what we ask is that we treat all people with kindness and respect. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We shouldn't ridicule anybody, we shouldn't drive people away, we shouldn't be uh, treating people harshly or negatively. At the same time, we must hold to the faith once delivered to the saints, as Jude says. Become informed about the Equality Act. Uh, we've got resources available and we'll point you to those. And consider your role as Christian citizens and make your voice known to your elected officials and pray for officials, government, and church in these challenging days. Luther says Christ dwells only in sinners, and we are such sinners. Come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That welcome is to all people, no matter who. And join us, we pray, at the feet of Jesus as sinners forgiven. In the midst of challenges, and these challenges will be increased for us in the church as the years come, we pray this Laetare week, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.